allowed us a starting point. Okay? If you don't start with some accepted truth, you're going to have a difficult time proving anything to be so. Okay? All right. So, um, the ruler postulate, all right, I'll start with that one here. Okay. Says a few things. The points on a number line. Okay. The points on a number line correspond to the set of real numbers. Okay. Points on a number correspond to the set of numbers. So again, we're talking about the number line. It's a line, right? Lines contain an infinite number of points, right? You can put in points on any given line because it goes on forever to the right, to the left, or you know, it goes on forever in two directions, and you know, an infinite number of points will fit there because they're infinitely, infinitesimally small, right? Um, and we can put any particular point that you choose on a number line can match, will match to a real number. Okay, remember the real numbers are numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the negatives, so those are like the integers, right, uh, and 0, and then also fractions, right, so like 1 third, 2 thirds, right, those are negative 1 third, negative 2 thirds, and also like square roots, 2, looks like square root of 5, square root of 7, all that stuff, and it includes numbers like pi as well, 3, 4, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, that goes on forever, doesn't repeat, you know, those kind of things. So all those numbers, the real numbers, correspond to a point on a number line, right? Okay. And so the coordinate, okay, is the numeric value of the point. <clears throat> All right. And so you might wonder, why is this called the ruler postulate? Well, if you think about a ruler, Okay, a ruler is, in a very basic sense, a number line. Okay, it's not really a line; it's more like a number line segment. It has a starting point, it has a stopping point. Okay, there are points, specific points marked along that ruler. Okay, and those specific points correspond to numeric values. Right, and so we take a ruler which has, you know, uh, a finite number of points and a finite number of measurements on it. No, well, actually, not really a finite number of points. I guess there's an infinite number of points along here. But a finite number of measures listed here, and they extend that concept to then the real number li number line, and then the real set of real numbers. Okay. So whereas a ruler, you know, only has a few markings on it, it's kind of like a number line. Okay. And so um, we've got the and it's got the different coordinates on it and stuff. And if we want to find distance, and so here's that measurement idea, right? Geometry. So the distance between two points on a line is equal to, and then I'll pause right there and we'll take a look at a picture. So I'll make a number line here with points A, B, and C on it. I'll put a, I'll make a line, I guess I should say, sorry. And I'll give them values. We'll say A has a value of 5, B has a value of 12, C has a value of 19. And this is not drawn to scale necessarily. It's not necessarily drawn to scale. Okay. <clears throat> What is the distance from, oh no, let's say from B to C? Go ahead. Seven. Seven. Are we all okay with that? The distance from B to C is seven? How'd you get that distance? Because B is equal to 12 and C is equal to 19. And to get from 12 to 19, you've you got to go seven units, right? Seven units to the right. So the distance from B to C is seven. Okay. So given the coordinate of 12, given the coordinate of 19, what can we do with these two things find the distance between them? Subtraction. Sorry, I know you're going to say Avery subtraction. So yeah. Subtraction, exactly right. So the distance between two points on a line is equal to 
difference, right? The difference between the coordinates. And it's kind of like, duh, Mr. Widmer, we know that. Let me ask another question. What's the distance from C to A? Oops, sorry, I'm just going to What's the distance from C to A? The distance from C to A. I hear 14. What do you say? Negative 14. Negative 14? Avery, what do you say? 14. 14? Okay. Daniel, how did you get negative 14? What did you do? Okay, I see what you're saying. So you got a negative because we're going from right to left instead of left to right. Okay, it's a good, good observation. Okay, in the case of distance, we don't actually care about direction. So in this case, we would then say the answer is really going to be what then? 14. Exactly right. Okay, in the case of distance, we don't care about direction. Distance will always be a positive measure for our cases here, right? Our, our, the measurements that we take will be, will be um, the measurements of distance will be positive. Now, locations can be negative, so you could go like, you know, you could, you know, be in a location of negative three, right? If you have another point like Z over here that's in negative three, a location can be negative, but distances we want to keep positive. And so, yes, we would say the answer here is in fact 14. So, we have to be careful about our little definition here. It's the, uh, we just, we just kind of, you know, uh, haphazard that it was just equal to the difference between the coordinates. And in fact, it's equal to the absolute value of the difference between the coordinates. Absolute value of the difference between the coordinates. Okay. Or you can always remember to keep your distances positive. That's another way to do it. Okie dokie. <coughs> Um, a couple of just little notation things. Remember that, for example, AB, that refers to the geometric object. Okay? Um, and then you'll see either M, AB, or sometimes you'll just see this, and that refers to the um, length slash distance. Okay, so it's a value. Okay, so just for notation sake, if you want to talk about the object, the segment, which is like a physical thing, you know, like this, right? So maybe that's how you talk about it. If you want to talk about its length, you can say the length of segment AB, or you can just say M segment AB, which refers to the measure, which is, of course, length of distance, the measure of segment AB. Okay, so just to differentiate those two things. All right, questions on any of that? All right, so I'll kind of scoot on through there because and that was pretty straightforward stuff. All right, so another postulate that we just accept to be true because if it wasn't true, we'd have some challenges ahead of us, other uh, things that make sense, make sense. The segment addition postulate. And again, there's that creative mathematical name that basically tells you exactly what we're going to be talking about. If B, okay, point B is between... A points A and C. Okay. By the way, one way you can denote that. So there's a way to denote B is between A and C. But A dash B dash C. That indicates that B is between A and C. So if B is between A and C, then A B plus B C is going to equal what? AC. AC. The total, right? From A to B plus B to C is going to equal the total A to Z. Okay. B does not have to be in the middle here. B does not have to be in the middle of A and B. B can be at any place, right? So just as a little quick example here. Um, Let's just say we have this. OK. 
Okay, so why don't you right now go ahead and just draw this scenario. A dash C dash B and AB is 25, CD is 9. So go ahead and just on your paper draw that scenario. See if you need to come up with a diagram here. And most of you will probably be able to figure out what my question is going to be. So <coughs> but I'll let you go ahead and just draw that scenario. And you don't have to worry about drawing it to scale either. You don't have to worry about drawing it to scale, just as long as it matches what it's supposed to. B here, this is not 25, it's not the coordinate for A, it's not the coordinate for B, 25 is the length from A to B, right? 25 is the length from A to B. CB equals 9, it means it's not the coordinate, not 9 here, it's coordinate, not here, and the length from C to B is 9. Okay? The length from C to B is 9. <coughs> and part of the trickiness here is making sure we can draw things, you know, um, from the words that were given there, labeling it accurately, that's important. So that's good. Can you also draw me a picture of it just to make sure that you've got the picture that you can draw a picture if you need to? Okay. Okay. Alright, so we have the right idea there. Okay. Alright, so let me show you what I what I've got up here. Okay. So here's an example of something like that. Okay. If you made this a line and not a line segment, that's that's fine. So if you made this a line, you know, if you put like extended it, something like that, that's okay. But I wanted to be careful here because I'm not talking about coordinates. AB equal to 25 means the length, right? AB is the length of AB. AB is 25. Okay? If I said just A equals 25, or if I said just B equals 25, then those would be coordinates, right? If it says A equals 25, then I can say, aha, A has a coordinate of 25. But it says AB is 25, then it says length is 25. CB, likewise, its length is 9. So from here to here is 9. That's the idea there. Again, if you did a segment, if you did a line, either one's okay there. But it's important that you can see between A and B. Okay. And so what's, what's my question going to be then for this problem? What's it going to be? What is right? the missing piece there? And what would AC be 16? Right, 25, take away the 9, 16. Okay? The total is 25, and this piece is 9. The remaining piece there is going to be um, 16, okay? Using it in terms of the segment addition postulate, right, we know that AC plus CB is going to equal AB. Let so me just use that. Um, so then we just, there's the segment addition postulate, and we can put in the information that we know. CB is 9, AB is 25, and AC is what we're trying to find. Okay, right, what is... AC 
That's what we're trying to find there. And so you subtract 9 from both sides, and you get the 16. Okay. Or you can just see, right? Full length 25, take away 9, you're left Alright. Questions on any of that? Okay. Cool, cool, cool. <coughs> Let's keep moving here. I've got one other little definition, I guess, I want to mend here. Again, it, it's maybe, you know, it's like, why are we talking about this? We know what the idea is. But just to define it, just to have it here, the point definition, definition of a midpoint, right? Okay. If B is the midpoint of AC, then A B is equal to B C. Picture looks something like this. Okay, and a picture looks something like this. That picture guarantees that D is smack in the middle of segment A C. Right, the left and right hand side are congruent or equal in length, and so therefore they're gonna B will be in the middle. Okay. Questions on any of that? We're all good here. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, so then let's keep moving here, and we'll talk about angles. All right. Enough line segments. Let's get into angles. Right. Defined angles yesterday. Okay. Remember that an angle is just two bays with a common end point. Two rays with a common end point. <clears throat> okay. Again, let me just draw a little diagram here and, and label some things for you just so we can all on the same page while we talk about things. Okay. Call this MOP, angle mop. Okay, so, pieces. We already know the pointy part of the angle is called the what? Vertex. Okay. The two rays as the sides. Duh, Mr. Widmont. Okay. The, um, between the two rays there, that's known as the interior of the angle. And on the out I call it the exterior of the angle. I'm not going to shade that. That's too much. Okay. In general, I think we can say that the interior is um, less than 180 degrees. The interior, we refer to the part of the angle that's the part that's less than 180 degrees. So this piece right here is less than 100 degrees. The exterior part of the angle is greater than 180 degrees. Right, very much. That, that, you an angle, right? It is an angle, but it's greater than 180 degrees. Interior less than 180, exterior the part greater than 180 degrees. All right, we already know how to name this. We call this thing angle MOP, or angle O, in this case would be okay, because only a single angle really there. Um, and of course we could say then the measure of angle MOP, and that's where you measure, or that's where you give the measure of the angle. <clears throat> For our class, the majority of the time, we're talking about measuring the angle in degrees. Believe it or not, there are other measure angles, just like there are other ways to measure lengths, right? Inches, centimeters, meters, miles, kilometers, all that stuff, okay? Um, you know, um, for angles, degrees are what you use, you know, for forever, but there's other measurements that we'll be looking at too. Uh, they're called radians, and we'll worry about that when we get there, okay? But we'll talk about those other times. All right. Uh, let's try a little exercise here. Let's name all of the unique angles in the diagram. 
name all of the unique angles of the diagram. And we'll stick to specifically interior angles here. Don't worry about trying to name an exterior angle or anything like that. We'll stick to interior angles. Okay, so someone want to raise their hand and volunteer here? What is the name of one of the um, angles here that are in this diagram? I don't want to give me a name. And let's use the three letter names here, right? Um, if we just say angle A, this is a situation where you wouldn't want to use a single letter A, because what, what, what is A referring to here? You know, which angle is it referring to? So, go ahead. Angle TAC, okay? So we got angle TAC, so this angle right here. So that would be one angles, angles. And so what I mean by unique is that makes that angle TAC, but we could also angle CAT and be the same angle. So we don't want to say that one. We don't want to say CAT as well. So TAC, CAT, they're talking about the same angle. So that's, that's, that's it. Okay. How about, do we have any other angles that we can name here, though? Go ahead, Jake. Um, FAC, angle FAC. Okay. And are there any other angles that we can name here? Go ahead, Jackson. What's that? FAT. Angle FAT. Call me fat. There it is. All right, yes. There's three angles here, right? So be careful with that. We have FAC, CAT, but then the big FAT is also in there. <laughs> it's in there as well, okay? So I'm watching. Those would be the, the only three unique ones, though. Again, we could say TAF, that's the same as FAT, though. We could say CAF, it's the same as FAC. So those are your three kind of unique angles there. So good. Be on the lookout for those because it's easy to forget about them. Okay, we also want to talk real quick about classifying angles as well. Okay, depending on their measure. Okay, so for example, um, we have acute. I'm sure you guys have heard this before, right? So acute angles are what? They're small, specifically less than 90 degrees, okay? Um, Right. Acute things are kind of normally small things, right? And so acute is less than 90 degrees. Okay. Um, what about if it's equal to 90 degrees? That is called what? Right. Okay. What about bigger than 90 degrees? More than 90 degrees? Yeah. Obtuse. I'm going to do one little uh, specific thing here. I'm going to say more than 90, less than 180, though. Okay. Again, that's like the... Um, you know, a uh, deal specific uh, mathematician in me. Because if we just kind of, you know, give the, just more than 90 degrees, well, then is a three, is a 270 degree angle obtuse? Mm, not really, no. Okay, it wouldn't be. And then, um, if it's exactly 180 degrees, it's, we could call it a line or a straight angle, straight angle. Straight. Okay, so good. That's got that down. Well done. All right, so we'll talk about these two postulates then, and hopefully get you some time to get started on things like I did not do yesterday. Okay, questions on anything so far? Questions on anything so far? That was all review, I'm sure, right there too, so, but again, okay. <coughs> so the protractor postulate. Similar to the ruler postulate, right? We use the ruler postulate to kind of like give differences um, along in segments. We use the protractor postulate to give um, measurements of angles, right? And so, uh, again, if you want to write this down, you can. If you just want to follow along with this one, you know, just follow along with it. So, the rays of an angle correspond to coordinates, okay, on, we'll say, a protractor. Okay, so just like we had points on a line that could correspond to the real numbers. The same kind of thing is true here with rays. Rays of an angle can correspond to coordinates like a protractor, like on a protractor. Okay? And just like we did with the coordinates on a line, we could subtract, right, find the difference between those coordinates to get the measures, and that's what we're going to do here. The measure of an angle is equal to the absolute value of the difference uh, between coordinates. Again, something that's 
maybe more difficult to write than it is to just like understand. Okay. We won't see a whole a lot of these, you know, but I mean, we'll, I'm just going to throw these at you because they're, they're so kind of simple, I'll say. You know, they're so kind of simple. Um, but just as an example, you know, just to give you a quick example here. Um, let's see, I've got, okay, angle OHS there. And let's say this has coordinates of D. If I line it up a certain way on my protractor, <coughs> this has coordinates of 26. If I line it up a certain way on my protractor, okay. So if I line this angle up on my protractor, and again, maybe it's not on the scale. Let's say that this points to 50 degrees, this points to 26 <coughs> degrees on my protractor there. Okay. What is the actual measure of angle OHS? Okay. So again, like you can think about this points to the 26 degree mark on my protractor. This is pointing to the 50 degree mark on my protractor. What would the measure of angle OHS actually be? Go ahead. What was it? 36. 36? How'd you get that? So you're right with the math, but, but the calculation was a little off. Should be 24. Should be 24. But right idea. Yes. Attract them. Okay, and it's the absolute value difference, but it's going to end up being positive 24 degrees with the way that you set it up anyway, so, yes. So that's the idea. Of course, we typically don't use a protractor in this way, right, bless you. Typically, to make it easy for ourselves, we line the protractor up so that this side is at zero, and then we just see whatever the measure is, right? Typically, we don't measure an angle by lining up with two different angles. We, we line up the zero on one side and then just see what the measure is going to be. But you can use your protractor in this way too. You know, it's one option. All right. Last postulate, it's the angle addition postulate. And again, it's very similar to the, pr the second addition postulate. Okay. <coughs> if A, it's going to point, right? If A is in the interior of angle COP, then, so let me draw that as a picture here. So here's, I'll just again, I'll make a little acute angle here. So C O P. Okay. And A is in the interior. So that means the inside of those two rays somewhere, I'm just going to, you know, A, I don't know, we'll say it's like right here. Okay, there's A. So if A is in the interior, then angle COA plus angle AOP is equal to angle COP. Okay. So I kind of like, if I add in another ray here, like that. COA plus AOP gives us the full COP, which again, like, does for my angle. <coughs> and again, you kind of see it's like, we kind of need this to be true, right? If this weren't true, then we wouldn't really be able to do a whole lot of geometry if this was not true. We have to kind of accept it to be true, okay? Proving it's true is a different matter altogether. I'm like, well, how do you prove that that's got to be true? I think it's, it's just got to be true. You know? So anyway. Okay. So I think I'll stop there. I think you should have enough to kind of get going. We'll see here. Okay. I'll give you guys an opportunity to, to try some things. Okay. So um, for your homework, I have uh, papers printed out for you. Okay. So I'm going to write the assignment up here on the board for you so that way you can see it's not all of the problems, but it is... Um, no, I'll show you. Okay, there's two papers I'm going to give you here. They're both front and back, but again, you're not doing all of them. Um, so I'll write down here what you're going to do. And I'll print them out since they're through. So for the um, segment addition worksheet, okay, you're going to do um, numbers 1 to 23 odd on what I would call the front, and I think you'll be able to determine which one's the front and which one's the back. Okay, so front, numbers 1 to 23 odd, and then back, Numbers 7, 11 to 16, and 18. And then on the um, other paper that's got angles and things, 
on the front, I want to read 2 through 10, the evens, and then number 11 as well, and then on the back, numbers um, 1 to 15 odd. Some of, some of these problems are as simple as like naming things or saying true or false, okay? So that kind of looks like a lot, but it won't end up really being a ton. But some are going to involve you using settings equations and things too, okay? Let me get those papers out to you here. <coughs> I'll hand them both to you kind of like, well, I'll say. The end of the paper is actually called bisectors and midpoints. If you want to take a picture of that, it's also on the Google Classroom too, or it should be eventually. So. Started on things, I'll be happy to come around and help you if you have any questions. Um. The very first problem on the segmentation works is like a little bit of a brain teasery kind of thing. If you want to skip that one and come back to it, I'm fine. That's fine. You know, if you prefer to just like knock some problems out instead of having to like you know stretch your brain too much right now, that's cool. I get it. Okay. Or you can start on this angle uh, one if you want to instead. Okay. So yeah. <clears throat> like I said, I'll come around and I'll be happy to help answer any questions that you might have. Please also make sure that your, you know, Chrome top 